Hello and welcome to Tights TV. We've got Andy, Dale, Dave. <clears throat> so great to have you all on. It's all work and everything like that, but it's great to have you all on. We're going to have a pre season four and going into next season in League One. So Andy uh, in the red corner. Well, you're up in top corner today, but you're up in the red corner. Um, pre season, what I think it's gone with fitness at players and stuff like that compared to last season. A um, couple of games that I've seen, I went to watch them against, uh, it was cruel, wasn't it? And um, the last one is one against Sheffield. I think it's going all right. Um, yeah, impressed with uh, some uh, players, uh, Neil and old uh, players as well. Um, yeah, I think it's going all right. Signs looks uh, looks good, look organised. I know it's only pre-season, you can't judge. Um, but yeah, early signs to me looks really good, I think. Good, Dale. We, we met up at yeah, Open Day, didn't we? Um, we did. Uh, not for this game. Yeah. How do you think <laughs> we went on? I mean, we sent to all Elder Zone, you know, up well, against you know a decent not for his side. And people say, yeah, we made changes in the second half, but at the end of the day, you still got to play what's in front of you, don't you? you look organised. Yeah, we but we both said, didn't we, that we looked uh, from defence to midfield. We looked we looked decent. We looked we looked really good. Uh, we held the zone. Um, we said that Luca Connell, he's mm. he's a player, isn't he? he he's mm -hmm. he's took um bounds of life, right? You know, by its scuff at neck, and he's uh he's taken to it well. Um, I think Forrest was his first tough test, wasn't it? It was because we had, we've had crew, we've had um workshop. Arrogate and workshop stuff like that. Um, but I I I I couldn't. All it problem was was just the uh, attacking attacking options at Forest, but then we um, Sheffield United. Sheffield United was a great game, a great game to be fair. Um, I felt like Sheffield United were the better side um, in full ninety minutes, but they didn't take the chances. I think they hit the post about three or four times, um, but they didn't take the chances. We did. Uh, we, we took two great chances to be fair. Um, but I think there's still there's still improvement needed. Um, I think going going forward, especially. Um, yep, yeah, Aitchinson scored that uh, that goal. Um, which which were good to see because we might be depending on him quite a bit this season. Um, and it was nice to see James Norwood as well get a run out. He looked he looked solid. To be fair. Obviously, there's ma he's got to keep up with match fitness and stuff like that. He's got to get match fit. He's got to, you know, he's he's, he's got to be he's got to be match ready. Um, but he he won a lot of jewels in the air. I, I noticed, so that's a good thing for heading onwards and towards goal. So, yeah, mate, I I, I will I've, I've been impressed to be fair, unbeaten. So that's a good thing. So yeah. D just going on from that, Dave, like what Dale said with, you know, attacking options and stuff, uh, we're going to, like, kind of leads on to players. I mean, what, were you surprised that, you know, both Morris and Woodrow went? Were you expecting one or other to stay? Um, bearing in mind that, you know, you could arguably say that they've been his two main attacking options for the you know, <laughs> best part of the season. Now we're left with Devante, Cole, Norwood was coming and uh, Isaac and you got young Aidan Marsh. Were you surprised that they both went, Morris and Woodrow? Um, I'm not surprised that either went, to be honest. <clears throat> I think um, you could see for a while that Woodrow was looking elsewhere. Mm. Um, I think it was uh, inevitable that he was going to go. He's obviously a name that's been slung around a lot over the last couple of seasons, especially during the transfer windows. And yeah, it's uh, it was always going to happen. Morris as well, you look at the form he was in last season and the effort he puts in and, you know, in a in a class team, he can be a class striker mm. and he's far too good for League One. So I'm not surprised that he went, but I'm absolutely gutted that he did because, like Dale said, it does leave us a little bit light up front. Um, and yeah, the strikers we've got now, they've not had much game time between them for us over the last season. Um, but you know, we've got a few new names in, so it's uh, it's just gonna be a brand new team, I think. And I think even the old players are gonna look like new players mm. because last season they weren't playing for the, for the manager, 
and you could you could tell that the, the likes of Callum Britton and Callum Styles, they just, especially Britton, was putting in half-ass performances, and he just didn't look interested. And you know, when things aren't good at the office, it, it is difficult to to do your best at your job. And uh, I think now with the, the positive moves, you know, the best moves for me over the summer were obviously Conway and that lot stepping aside and letting some people with fresh ideas come in. Uh, stayed domestic, someone that knows the league, players that know the league. And um, I just think that the players that were here last season, they're going to have a new breath of life under Duff. Mm-hmm. I think it's, you know, positive. We've had a good pre-season, although, we, you know, pre-season doesn't mean anything, but... <clears throat> you know, it's, it gives them a chance to sort of like knock about together and see how they how they gel, and um, but it all changes Saturday when they run out on that pitch at um, at Plymouth, and mm. you know it's the the only thing that worries me is is the the strike force, but they haven't played consistently together, and you know it's going to take them a few games to do that. You know, we talked before about the results. You know, not if you don't get the results straight away, then people are going to start with the doom and gloom. But you know, there's a lot of new players in this team, especially up front. It's going to take time to gel. And um, no, I just, I just think it's, it's going to be a season of consolidation. I think all these people that expect us to go straight back up, I think, are a bit optimistic. To be fair, um, mid table, mid upper table, I'd be very happy with this season. And uh, just getting the players playing, and you know actually showed a bit of hunger and desire, which I think Duff will get out of them. Different sort of manager, different sort of organisation behind the scenes now, so positive, I think. You know, I'm much happier than what was at the back end of last season. We've uh, all been saying, though, haven't we? We've all been saying that he talks a good game. He, he you know, is is that play? We've, we've seen him on, on, in, on social media getting involved in training sessions mm-hmm. and stuff like that. He look, he, he's done twice as much as, as three other managers has. And and that's that's a good sign in my in my eyes. It's it's positive. It, it's um, I just hope that I just hope that the board the well the new board are going to let him run the run the players as a manager and bring him bring in his own players and stuff like that because we've had we've had managers I, in the past that I think know, that's what it will do because he did say mm-hmm. and I think players that you've seen coming in is that Norwood were his player that were a shout. Uh, mm. He's wanting players that's actually going to put a shift in, and it's always been banded about sweat on shirts and stuff like that. And I think the players that are coming in now are going <laughs> to model and uh, a, a style and system what he's wanted to play. I mean, just going back to some of the players, um, Andy mm. Dale mentioned it: Luke Connell, uh, Connor McCarthy, yeah, uh, Nicky Nicky Cadden. Apparently, rumored to be. I mean, uh, in championship clubs, Robbie Cundy. So it seems to be yeah. that he's addressed that weakness at back, and he's like building from back upwards, and he's making back more structured. What I noticed, I don't know if uh, what you thought in pre-season friendlies, is that he seems to be very high press, high tempo, and that's what he's demanding. And players seem to be picking it up. Yeah, yeah. Um, then players like you mentioned, I think they've. You know, look, I mean, I missed uh, the Forest game because I was away, but the uh, other games that I have seen, um, I think Neil Players is doing well. That, mm-hmm. um, go on, uh, what is it, not, not Cundy, um, what's the other one now? McCarthy, um, Cadden. Cadden, that's it. He do not look quite fit at the minute, um, but he, I can see why he stretched him in. Um, I think he's going to be a good one as well. Cut that, Connell. Um, I personally think it looks quality, to be honest. Yeah. Again, I know you can't, um, you know, judge in pre season, but what I've seen in him, uh, it looks good up ball. Um, it, it works, which we've been missing. Uh, I think he's going to be an important player for it, uh, for us this season. Um, and also. Go on, Andy. Sorry, sorry, Dale. Sorry. No, I was just about to say, like you're saying, he. He looks a leader as well. He does. He? Yeah, I think uh, I think that could be a really shrewd signing, uh, if I'm honest. Um, mm-hmm. I don't want to, you know, like him kiss a death like, but uh, yeah, to what I've seen, I think he's going to be a good one. And also, I'm not just saying this because of all that he scored, but I think Benson uh, looks different 
I think it's a big season for Benson as well, um, from his personal point of view. Um, I honestly do. Um, I think we, I think we saw that uh, against Sheffield because he's, he'll definitely be wanting to stake a claim uh, for, you know, a place in team against Plymouth. Um, well, Duff knows all about it, doesn't he, from being at un- un- yeah. he's at Burnley. So it's again, it's again knowing a player. Knowing what he can get out of him, and I think it's that like standards what we've been missing, uh, Dave. Yeah. It's standards yeah. and a structure what we we had last season. I mean, it was clear to see us, you know, what Callum Britton coming out in, you know, in media calling out, you know, what we're going off, you know, and if Vast are so disjointed to what's happening in training, it's going out on pitch, and obviously results have led to his downfall. Surely that you know a new gaff has come in, Duff. Readdressed it, rebuild job as if you want. <coughs> if you think you're a championship player, but we'll be playing a championship with a League One player, wouldn't you? You'd be playing in League One. So it's getting back mentality across the players to like, said, you know what? This is how we expect it to be. If you don't fit it mo- model, then see you later. You're not, you're not going to fit it bounce aside. Well, you've got football people running the club now, haven't you? <coughs> people, people that know, know the game. Um, you know, the ones of the last four seasons. You know, they haven't really had a clue, to be fair. There's been no structure or anything over the last, the last, certainly the last two seasons. And then the back end of the first season when they came in, it was just a, just a, just a mess. You know, there was, you know, players being consistently played out of position, and the team changing every game. And, you know, touching on what Andy said there, leadership on the pitch. There's been none of that since Moat went. Mm. You know, um, I, th- I think when he was, Moe was playing with um, with Matty James in the field, he was he was a much better player, and there was much more leadership in the team then, with um, a bit of experience and a bit of pressure off certain players. But uh, last season there was just, just nothing at all. You know, there was no leadership on the sidelines, there was no leadership on the pitch, and it's no surprising that we got um, you know absolutely battered in the league because there was there was just nothing to stabilise us and. You know, the new people, the new board have come in. They've completely changed it. You know, they've not gone abroad. They've looked around people that know the, know the leagues, the games. They've brought in people that know football. And I think they're going to leave it to the people that know the football. You know, Crime's been around for a long time. He's, you know, he's, he's, he's Barnsley. You know, he knows what the fans want. Mm. Um, he's not going to be going on to excel and working out what players are up from that. He's just going to get in a manager that's got a good reputation. You know, he's had some good seasons with Cheltenham. Uh, he's going to, I think he's going to leave it to the powers that be that actually know what they're doing and can get the best results from, you know, the players. And I think it's going to show the season. There's going to be a whole different mentality on the pitch. Yeah. And I'm just going, uh, Dale, just following up what uh, Dave said, very good uh, point about leadership, you know, on sidelines and uh, on pitch. I think what's refreshing for me to see is that he's also got his back row staff sorted. He's got Martin Patterson and Martin Devaney, and he's got the trust of people around him to help him on the training pitch and work on set pieces. Whereas before, I know they like COVID and shot weren't allowed to, you know, he couldn't fetch his own people and kind of thing, and Joel Alman or their kind of stuff. But if Michael Duff wanted his right hand man to be this player, uh, this manager, Martin Patterson. <coughs> Club went out and got him, so it's like statement to intent here, right? We're giving you tools to work with, check it on. And again, on the sidelines, it's what plays by into it. it's confidence and momentum in it building, yeah, absolutely, mate. And, and Patterson looks he, he sounds ruthless to be fair. Hmm. I think, um, I don't know about you, I went I went to the um, the training session that they had down at the training ground, and hmm. um. <clears throat> He, he was he was saying, "Oh, if you don't listen, I'm gaining to you. You you effing this, effing that. You you, mm. you you're stuffed basically. If you me- if you mess about and you mess with me and stuff like that, mm. you know, if you don't put effort in, you you know you you're in doghouse. So it's like, um, <clears throat> I think that I think I think it's a good addition. I think it's a really great addition. I think he's he's very vocal. Martin Devaney again. He knows he know he knows." The club, but like the back of his hand, doesn't he? Hmm. He's been he's been involved with Barnsley Football Club now for about God, what twenty year, twenty year possibly, a bit a bit hmm. less, like, but a bit less. Um, yeah, I think I think that it's um, I just 
I th- we haven't heard much from like Gene Cry and the Cry and, and you know James and anything like that. And I think that I think we could hear from them a little bit more. But I don't know. I, I and what reason, though? Because I'd, I'd be happy for it. Just managed to get on with it. To be yeah. Saying. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Hundred percent. I think. I think. You know. I think. Let them do the main. But you know. You know. But I can't think of word. Uh, get them doing just back at back at pitch. I'd rather like Khalid, uh, Narev, and all others just sitting back round and let manager take it on. Whereas yeah. last season it seemed to be other way around. We at manager yeah. didn't really have a voice, and it yeah. was. The backroom people, what like coming out with, and I'm thinking now, I would drive yeah. it other way around on this one. I, I, to, to be fair, I would like to hear from them a little bit more. What would I you would, like to say? What would you like I, them just, to say? Just, just to see, just, just see how everything's doing. Just to see how you know how's um, Duff's doing as an individual. I think he can say that himself. He doesn't need other people mm. to talk to him. Um, but I think just, just stuff on on like. On the ground, you know, just a little bit of on stadium, possibly mm-hmm. on you know training facilities, stuff like that. I know we we want to concentrate what's going off on pitch and stuff like that. That's the main, that's the main concern. Um, but I think, I, 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 to be fair, let if they want to just sit back and just let the manager get on with work, that's fine. That's fine by me. But as 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 like owners, they are from Barnsley, so I think just to hear from them on updates and stuff like that, how like how like they're doing, you know, stuff like that. I I, I might be talking absolute crap, but you know, I, I think it's just I think I think it's nice to hear. It's nice to hear from owners as well. You know what I mean? It is, but I look at it like this: is that James has never been one to come out even before kind of thing, and Gene were visibly upset with. with because a bit rumbling is what we're going off with Conway and Lee, and you could tell that in a press conference. And she got asked yeah. a question about what happened to Patrick and that. So, um, for me, I'd rather be there's a lot of emotion there with, with Gene, and quite mm. rightly so. I mean, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, massive part of the uh, club. And I think if I think it's sorted to just be in background, <coughs> um, I think Khalid will do a lot of the, the talk, which, yeah. which has done, you know, with his uh, meetings and that. And again, Michael Duff um, would not. I mean, uh, Narev is 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 been there. You know, he introduced his son and explained, you know, his background kind of thing. So I think he'd take the not brunt in it, but I think he'd be the more front of it uh, to come across to fans. I, um, I, do you know what? I, I love what Khalid's doing. I think he's been one of the most vocal chief executive <clears throat> ad for mm. decades, in my opinion. I, I, you know, I think he's doing a tremendous job. I really do. He, you know, he's he said hello to me um, when I went down. Well, us when mm. we went down to training session and stuff like that. You know, he said hello to you personally. Mm. You know, he's he's got. You know, he's he's oh, messing about with to, he's messing mm. about with Toby Tykin. You know, on Facebook and stuff like that. He's having he's having he's having fun. He's having trying, fun, isn't he? Yeah, they're trying to engage with with fans. I mean. Just going back, uh, Dave, to last season, like what uh, Dale was saying there, we, you know, trying to have fun and trying to engage with fans. It's what we're like lacking last season, isn't it? And it's like it's got to be like a fresh start, a fresh challenge. But we can't forget what happened last season. But from now on, it's like right, this is what we need to do to get it back to community, to get it back to how we want to operate and operate as it is positive. Showing his intent, what we what we want to do for in in League One, and hopefully get it back in Championship. He needs to bring everyone back together. That's his, you know, his primary task. Um, last season, the gulf between the club and the fans was massive, mm. and it was also massive between the fans and the fans. You know, looking on social media, all I see is Barnsley fans bitching at each other. Mm. You know, and it, it's just so divided, and it's been divided because of all. Everything that's happened over the last couple of seasons, we've had nothing to cheer about. You know, it's been doom and gloom. The, the football's been mostly horrendous. Um, it's It was like no one at the club cared, um, going from the top to the bottom. And everyone just gets disheartened and they take it out on each other. And I think when Khalid's come in, he's come in and he's done, like Dale says, he's doing a really good job and he's trying to reach out and he's trying to get everyone back together again and just make yeah. it a family club. It's always been a family club, Barnsley. 
but the last four years it's it's been like a a rallying family at, you know at christmas time everyone's mm. at each other's throats yeah and no one's getting on mm. and no one wants to see that no. you know and obviously getting the club back in touch with the fans is the first step and just getting everyone back together again and you know he's, he's done that by the changes that have been made so the manager that's been brought in um everyone's been calling for you know experience and that's what he's done he's um he's spoken he's been to he went down there the garrison the garrison he went to yeah uh, so, yeah yeah engagement he's, meetings he's been, and, yeah. he's been engaging with people and finding out what people <clears throat> want and he's, he's brought that back to the club and he's he's but he's put it into practice mm. and you know i the last couple of seasons i felt really distanced myself mm. i went to a lot of games last season but i didn't go for the football i went to see you know the lads and yeah. to have a beer and all that the social aspect of it but i feel really positive going into this season not that we're gonna have a really good season mm. but that we're moving in the right direction at last and for a long long time you know since that transfer window in 2017 where Horahan left yeah uh, it's just yeah. felt like we've been going in the wrong direction since then yeah. and we need to, we've turned that around i think now obviously we can't tell until we actually get you know the season exactly. started and it gets put to practice on the pitch but i feel personally now that we are heading in the right direction and i think everyone's on the same on the same sheet as well now they're all you know wanting the same thing yeah. and we're all getting pulled back together again you know, time's going to tell, but you know, really happy with what's happened, really positive, and um, looking forward to Saturday. And I've not said that for a fair few years. Looking forward to Saturday, so <laughs> that's going to lead us nicely on to you know this. I, this I can't here, believe I, I can't believe how quick it's gone these last couple of months. I think it's I'm been absolutely flown by. Yeah, yeah. So Andy, just what Dave was saying there is that you know feeling more positive. Can't wait for the season to come around. What we've all been saying here, like and how quick it's gone. Championship, is it going to be next season or season after? You know, I mean, things are still in motion. How positive, you know, how confident do you feel that we're going to hold his own? Look, I, I, I personally, this is my own opinion. All about opinions, mate, yeah. Yeah, I think we've got as good as chance as anybody in that league. I don't care where they are. Derby, Wednesdays, historically big clubs. But it that's be But to me... That, <laughs> that, to me, that, that that's the important word historically. Yeah, they mm. are historically big clubs. They're in League One for a reason, yep. whether it's because of end points deductions or because of being crap. They're in League One for a reason, like us. I'll be honest. I'm going for top four. Okay. I think I think well I think our aim is at least top four, and I can't see any reason why we can't do it, apart from Derby. Chef Wednesday, I know Peterborough seems to do well. <clears throat> oh, oh, oh. Is oh, that as Charleston? Charleston? Is that as now, well, uh, well, Andy, or would it be, you know, a couple of more additions like a striker? What <coughs> they were on about earlier? Would you would you say we, we, we need a striker? In, yeah, I think we need to win. If I'm honest, true. Um, because relying on Cole, um, if that's what we come to, then. Um, Yes, so top four. But yeah, we, we need uh, we need at least a couple of strikers in for me to give us options. Um, I'd also like to see another couple of midfielders coming in. Um, and again, I, I might be minority here. Um, what they're about to say, but I personally think we should be relying on youngins like Aidan Marsh and uh, other youngins. It's far too. I, I think it's far too early for him. I honestly you don't do. want to burn him out, do you? You don't want to burn no, him out. No, I, I honestly do think it's far too quick for him. Uh, when they first came in last season, I personally think they were there just because we didn't have anybody else to stick in mm-hmm. um, with players uh, <coughs> injured or wants to go or whatever. Um, we shouldn't be relying on them. Um, don't get me wrong, if they start and Tech League by Storm, then that's fine. But mm. yeah, for me, another couple of strikers, at least two. Um, and I'd like to see a, a couple of more midfielders as well for cover uh, in depth. Uh, yeah, because yeah. I'm surprised Styles and Alex still there. Mm. Uh, they could go before Saturday. If they're not, um, 
well, I wouldn't have said play styles, but I actually don't think it, hmm. the event's not there. I don't think it... I, I was saying uh, this to Maddie, and I do apologise if I'm out of order for saying this, but I think Styles now, now he's been in a uh, national setup, and especially playing against England, I think he thinks he's bigger than club. I honestly do. I think he, he thinks he's better than he actually is. I don't care what anybody says, he is. Mm-hmm. Uh, he is on about playing in Premier uh, or top flight. He looked absolutely nowhere near uh, that last season, and mm-hmm. he needs to take a long hard look at his son. I know the footballers, you know, they want to play at highest level. It's a short career, all this and that. But he's not as good as he thinks his styles. Um, Alec, I think Alec's a really good player. I honestly mm-hmm. do. Uh, when he came on the other day against Sheffield, um, I still think he looked sharp. Um, yeah. I think he's one that could play at a higher level. Um, but if Styles is there, I'd stick him in the squad. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not quite sure playing him because, like I said, I don't think he wants to be there. I, I, I actually think uh, pre seasons I've seen him play, he's just gone through motions. I, I honestly do. Um, but yeah, uh, top four for me. Top four. Yeah, Dale, and he's going for top four. Do you think it's going to be, you know, like that top six, uh, mid table? What's yours? I'll take, I'll take ten. I'll, mm. I'll, I'll take ten upwards. I think that's going to be our. I think that's going to be our stepping. I think that's going to be our limit. I think mm. tenth upwards. Um, <clears throat> there are clubs in League One that can give us a good go. Andy said two in Wednesday's Derby, Peterborough, uh, Charlton, Portsmouth, Bolton even. Um I I'll take tenth or higher me, mate. I think I think it's um I think it I think it's a must that. I think I think any lower is a fail, in my opinion. Um but I think going back on to where Styles is, I said the exact same words to you, uh, Neil, last mm. week against Forest. Mm. I said Styles looks like he, he he can easily get Monk on. Mm. You know what I mean? He can easily he can easily he can easily his head can easily get down and he, he can he can have a throw a little bit of a paddy on. And I think Cajun could have a, a role to play in this this and all agents as yeah. well. Yeah, and I think that Elliot looks more of a professional. Mm. I think he looks more loyal. Um I'm not listen, I'm not getting on at Callum Styles because the first couple of the you know, it were brilliant. For us, a couple of seasons back, it were it was superb. Um, it was just last season where everything was just absolutely down in dumps. Down, you know, it was just crap. It was crap for everybody, not just Callum Styles. It was crap for Britain. It was crap, crap for Woodrow. And we mentioned Corley Woodrow earlier, and and he looked done last season. To be fair, did Corley, and and um, to be fair, I'm glad he's gone. I really am. I know he's he's been a good servant for us. He's scored some goals, but it was time for him to move on. I think um, it was best for all parties that one, wasn't it? Yeah, and same with Carlton Morris as well. All the thing I'm disappointed is is the fee that we got for them two players. I think we got what three three point something million for each for both of them. I don't really read too much into that because I look at it a bigger picture as in what we're saving on wages, what we're on goal appearance, what yeah, we're on true. goals assists and all that. So if you tot up all them kind of things, added bonuses, it probably end up a bit more. Because mm. I think you, you look at your strikers, and mm. I'll, I'll get to you in a minute, Dave, sorry, uh, but you look at like strikers, you, you're going to get a them. wage, then you're going to get a, an appearance fee, you're going to get a goal <laughs> assist, you're going to get a goal. F- so by the time they them, add up on top of here, it's like how much of the bigger saving is it, as well as your mm. transfer fees you've got in. So yeah. I think it could be. I mean, it's always undisclosed, and uh, mm. it got mentioned this other day. Undisclosed, and <laughs> it's been clubs turned down three, four, five bids for. Uh, I think it was Morris. I think they alluded to. So they're not like getting shot, but then you look at like Callum Britton when he knew that Blackburn were backing for him again. He actively pushed for club for the last yeah. two weeks to go there. So it's and like you know what? I'm, I'm glad he's got agent. To be fair. And how much has that agent got to get in as well? You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, if that's the case, if that player's like wanting to push, I mean, 
if you cast your mind back to the board reshuffle with Gene Krein, and I think uh, uh, Khaled got asked a question about players. Well, when players be going? He didn't say they were transfer listed, but it's expressed for, for a number of players that had expressed a wish to move on. Yeah. He didn't say it were transfer yeah. listed. So, for me, I'm looking at if Callum Britton for the last two weeks been <laughs> pushing for a move, has he been wanting to go? So, yeah, you can go, for, but only if we get this X amount, whatever it is. You yeah, and I, mean? I think so and I, play a power, and isn't it? Yeah, and I think Styles, <clears throat> I think Elik is more likely to stay. I mm. want Elik to stay more than Styles. I do. Mm. I, I think he can, if Elik can, if you know, he'll be at World Cup this year, Michael Elik, if he has a good couple of months this this first half of the season, hundred uh, percent. He's he's got he's he'll go to if he don't get injured, and we we're on form on. Going up to November, he'll be in that Poland squad. No, no mm-hmm. doubt about it in my eyes. Oh, yeah. Um, and I think that Styles as well. If he has a good, you know, if he stays and has a good couple of good, you know, same as Elik, I think he'll be in Hungary's squad. Um, you know, I think Hungary has got better better midfielders and better players than Poland in my eyes. Um, but I think, like like Andy said. Midfield needs one, possibly two more improvements, in my opinion, mm-hmm. and also up front as well. We can't, no disrespect, yeah. but we can't, we can't. I think, I think on. Duff highlighted that Annie before last week when he got answered. I think in Chronicle, he's saying we know what area we're light on and we're actively looking. So it's, I think it's just waiting for the right person or persons, yeah. people. We, we, can, we can't so. keep relying on Devon to call, he, no. he, he just runs about, he no. just. He runs about. That's it. His touch, his touch, his first touch is appalling. He spent more time on floor against Sheffield United than he, than you know than he had on ball. You know his touch is appalling, and that needs improving. Mm-hmm. If that's down it'd to be, him or to or to training staff, so he'd be working. Devante Cole would be working with me if he went for it because of his dad. I don't care what anybody says. It's his it, name. It's, his, it's, his it, name. it's, it's because. Andy Cole, I don't care what anybody says. Um, it is to me again not improved, but no. I hope I hope he proves me wrong. But yeah, no, it definitely needs sending out on no no. He know. weren't even he weren't even that good for Motherwell. No, it, weird signing, wasn't it? Weird signing. Yeah. Yeah, but and again, I'm, and I, we're on I'm about last season, not this season, now, isn't it? So yeah, yeah. and and he were a last season signing. He weren't this. Yeah. He weren't this year, were he? It, things he, will he change under Duff. I think he'll get him. You know, he's got Norwood, and you wouldn't have yeah. you wouldn't have entertained him last season, would we? No, Dave. I've got a top four. We've got ten upwards from Dale. I think you said it previous, mate. But uh, you know what, what? What are you expecting? You know, and what would you? You know, a reasonable season for us. Well, I, I was up for the last um, last home game of the season. Was it was it, was it Peterborough the last home game? Hmm. Oh, yeah, you sat with me. Yeah, yeah. and um, I had a few beers afterwards. Hmm. We were discussing this, and uh, with Steve and Luke and everyone, and we were, we were saying three to five years, you know, is the is the aim. I well, think that was back then, though. That was back then, so yeah. I think we yeah. can hopefully accelerate that a little bit now. Hmm. Um, I think this season is going to be um, starting fresh, um, building small blocks, and just having a, a consolidated season in League One. I think, uh, like Dale says, tenth, I'd be happy with tenth, mm-hmm. um, more I, than happy. I'd but like to... I'd be even happier if the performances are there, and we're performing much more professionally, not making stupid mistakes. Uh, the, the defense last season was um, well, everywhere was shocking, but the defense was all over the place. Hmm. When you look at that defense from the season before, hmm. um, it's it, it was completely unrecognizable. I just think we need to tighten up and just just have a solid season. You know, don't we don't have to go out and you know win every game. We don't have to go out and you know batter teams that are lounging around the bottom, which I think a lot of people are going to be expecting. There are some big teams in there, like Andy says, historically big teams. Uh, history is history. It's it's it doesn't make any difference. We're all in the, that one league for that reason, you know, because that's where we deserve to be. 
and don't everyone's... expect and, and don't expect Cheltenham to be easy as well because they'll want they'll want to get one over on Michael Duff, won't they? So no, oh, definitely. But it's going to be the same with a lot of teams in there because yeah. you know everyone says about Barnsley being a, a small team, but in that league they're going to be looked at as a big team because they've spent so many seasons in the Championship and their ex Premier League as well. So there's you know teams like Forest Green Rovers, Cheltenham, Exeter, they're all going to be thinking. It's a good scalp there. It's a good mm. scalp, mm. and they're they're going to come for us. And I think, I think they'll be the most difficult games. If I'm being perfectly honest, yeah. your Wednesday game, your Derby, Sunderland, Portsmouth, they're going to show you a bit more respect. Um, they've played us more times, more often, and you know it's a, it's a different game. That is, it's when you get against the the teams that are scrapping for their lives that um, <coughs> England give you that respect. Let's see a potential upset. That you're gonna really be up against it, and um, you know, P Plymouth first game of the season. It's gonna be difficult. It's gonna be it's a long journey. It's the uh, first game of the season, first um, time a lot of them will be playing together properly. And you know, I take happily take a draw there. Happily take a draw. You know, and even the second game against Cheltenham, I'd be you know happy with a the draw there. Just I don't want to start. On a downhill plummet, because then you are up against it. It's not disastrous, but you want to start with a few positive results. Draws positive results, wins are even better. But tenth, I'd be happy with anything above that. I think is a bonus. But like Andy says, you know they could finish. You know in the top six, the top six yeah. could get to the playoffs. You yeah. don't know. It's a brand new team. It's a brand new system. It's a brand new setup. It's you, you don't know. You, you, you could get absolutely anything. Yeah, and, and, and five sub rule as well. That's mm, that's yeah. that's a, that's one of the main factors this season as well. Is yeah. that five sub rule? They've got to they've got to get the subs bang on, spot on, and it takes it takes out any pre match um, knowledge. It takes out pre, you know pre match mm. you know. Another manager, his tactics can go out at window with this five sub rule. You know what I mean? Because three subs is is easily manageable for an opponent yeah. manager. You know, for his tactics and stuff like that. But five subs, it's it's a massive factor. It's a massive factor, and also with with youngins as well. We Andy, I think that I think I think Aidan Marsh is ready. I do. I really do. I think he, I think Matty Wolf is ready. Um, I'd like to see Youngins play more in Johnson's Paint Trophy. Um, <coughs> excuse me, but um, I think the Papa John's Trophy is a is a is is a must for Youngins. I think just to get some games in for their in that, you know, I, I'd love to go go far in that. I, I want us to win as many games as possible. It's going to be a massive, massively long season. Um, and I think youngins they deserve a chance to play competitive professional football in Papa John's Trophy. I really do. I, but I think Marsh is ready, and I think Matty Wolf is ready as well. So, going on that, I think I think I'm looking forward to the season. I really am. I really am. I I, I think I think a few wins at the first four or five games, three possibly three wins is a good start. Two draws, I think. Because we, I think we've got Derby in the first five games, haven't we, Neil? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <coughs> the unexpected. Um, I'm going for top six. I, I think we'll just make playoffs. Uh, I think he's more or less got his defence sorted out. Uh, mm. I can't see many more yeah. defenders coming in. I do agree. I, I'd like to see a replacement for Britain, for right wing back, because I just can't think we can rely on Jordan Williams all the time. I know we're linked with Kane Ramsey from Southampton. I don't, I don't get this with Jordan number. Williams. I don't get this with Jordan Williams, though, Neil, because a lot of people are saying that he weren't he weren't good last season. He were he were one of our best players last season. I thought he couldn't go to end of season. I didn't think he were, he were great. Since he season. got is it, then, his injury, his injury set him back hundred percent. But you can look at rest of uh, players. I don't think you know you were all on to pull that. Any any decent players, I don't think me. And it's not disrespect to players. I just think we're shot of confidence. We're playing in. We didn't know it was like playing square pegs in round holes there for time. And I, I just think we look, look disjointed, not disinterested, mm -hmm. but probably lost faith in manager. I mean, when player Sparge is saying back in March, 
you know, jobs yours if you go down or stop up on all rates and going back to Sweden. So if they said back beer, what's players going to be thinking? Yeah. See you later. What's the point? If you're not going to, what, why should I? So yeah. again, it's like that disjointed what we don't see behind the scenes. And us as fans, like Dave was saying earlier, we, we you know, the split divides in fan base, but we're split divides in, in bloody club when you've got like manager coming out and saying, no, I'm going <laughs> anyway. So I'm not bothered. So yeah. again, did you want to really make a name where you just, you know, well, well get me some CV, it might look all right when I go back on. So again, it's the standards what need to change. And I think we have changed with Duff. He's got his backroom staffing. Absolutely. And that's why I'm thinking that when Duff will come over to his players, what he's, what he's wanting, this way system, they're going to buy into it. And if they don't, then it's see you later. I don't want you. Yeah. You know, I'm, and I'm, I think that's what it's wanted. A fresh, yeah. It's wanted a fresh fresh challenge and a fresh start for everybody concerned at the yeah. club, to be fair. Absolutely. So this is where we move on now. I'm, I'm, a bit, I'm a bit shocked with your two saying we're going to get top six, to be fair. Um, no, I, I, I think uh, top six. I think top uh, six. I, I don't see why we're any different to any other. I think top six. I mean, the, the key for me, up. the key for me being top six is that we've got to treat what Dave was saying earlier. We've got to treat every game and respect the opponent. We can't be going to such as a Sheffield Wednesday and a Derby and playing eight or nine out of ten, and no respect going to Markham and playing five or six out of ten, thinking that it's a given to get a result there. I we don't need think to we I don't think we show no team no respect. I think we show no team any respect whatsoever. We, we're we have going done, out there to we win We have done games. before, because you've seen it when we played Millersbury and QPRs and West Broms. We've hooked us on to there. Yeah, then when we've, when we've come to our place, no respect to Peterborough, we've more or less like rolled over and tickled, you know, ever's back's tickled. Yeah. When we should have got it with Scruff at Nick. It's all right, raising your game against Fulham's and you all them, oh, that's great. We've got a great result there. But week after, we lost to Peterborough. Mm. So you need to, you can't just go out and think it like an Accrington or a Fleetwood or a Markham. And I don't mean disrespectful. <coughs> the smaller club is in like expectations, but like Dave said, they'll be seeing that as like we can get a scalp here. That's the result. Mm -hmm. We need True. to know that we know how to grind a one nil dirty result at rather than go for like two, three, four notes. And I think that's the mentality that needs to get through. And I think it's a great appointment with Michael Duff saying he knows the leagues. We're not going to win every game pretty. We're not going to, and he even said it on Radio Sheffield. We're not going to win games pretty. There might be some that's going to be ugly and it might be a 1 1 draw, but it's a point away. We move on. And that's what I think that's what you've got to do. Whereas before, I don't think we really had a game game plan as such. It would just go out and see up. Mm. I, I said to you last week, didn't I? I? I just want a strong season. I just want a yeah, strong, I think that's what full se a strong full season. None of this second half, we abs first half we crap, then second half we're absolutely outstanding. I want a nice, good, strong, solid season, you know. And for, and for me, it's a be interesting to see what Michael Duff does with players from last season, what, what have come down, what's left, such as like your Matty Wolves and your Liam Kitchens, <clears throat> uh, Liam Kitchens and that, and say, can, can I improve that player? And I think they will do under Duff because they'll want mm. to be doing what Duff says. And I think I if you look at Cheltenham, you look what he did via, he got him on verge at playoffs, then he got him promoted at Cheltenham, small budget, but again, them players had run through a brick wall for him, and that's what you want. Not household names, but they actually do a shift and they do a job and they know what, what was required in them across that white line. I think that's why, in a way, it reminds me of like an English Ishmael, if I'm honest. Mm -hmm. Even I think even his personality comes like that across to me. Um, yeah. But... I, again, I, I honestly think we've got a, a really, really good manager there. Um, mm. but, you know, we should be thankful we've got him. I, I think yeah. uh, I think his own uh, record's going to be quite good this season. But, I, don't, I, don't, th you know, I don't think he's as brutal as Ishmael. I don't think, I think he's he could as brutal. be. I, I personally think he could be, without a mm. doubt. He could be. But I think I think um, what is is what's his name is second hand man. What's assistant Matt coach? Carson. Matt, Matt Carson. Carson. I think I think he's more brutal to be fair. Um, like, oh. And I I agree. I agree with Andy. I think I think we've we've got a good chance. Do, good cop, bad cop. Ooh. What you said, Dave? Mm -hmm. Good cop, bad cop. <laughs> Duffin, Duffin Patterson. Well, as, as long as they they're getting the message across, and as long as. Um, the players respect him, then they can be as bad or as good as they want to be. Yeah, you know, Ishmael had the respect to the players. Maybe it was because of his um, 
professionalism or maybe it was because they were scared of him. I don't know, but mm. it worked. But I think, um, no, it's, as long as you've got <laughs> respect for the players, then that's the main thing. As long as, as, long as they want to play for him. You know, it's that battle, isn't it? That's, we didn't have that last season, if you can tell. And like you said, Neil, the players that didn't play well last season, how they perform under Duff is going to be interesting to see. I think that's a good point to leave it on that. Uh, thanks, people, for watching. Great mm -hmm. to have Andy, Dale and Dave on. Great in tech on everybody. It's a, it's an insight on everybody's thoughts and different players, different uh, situations where we're going to uh, go in league and stuff like that. So please like, subscribe and share. Comment below uh, your score predictions or where we're going to finish in league. Do you think it's going to be a tough uh, game at Plymouth and uh, Cheltenham for first two? But Andy, Dale and Dave, thanks for joining me. Appreciate it. Cheers, mate. You're welcome. One, one yeah, thing left to say. You, you Reds?